60 hours offshore, 22 anglers, a winner take all money pot, dozens of crazy species, and some extremely deep water. When I was a kid, I would watch Florida sport fishing TV and I would watch all of these crazy anglers load up on a massive boat, go out and fish for multiple days and catch fish that I had never even heard of. So when I got a call last year that I was invited on one of these trips, you guys know I had to hop on the opportunity. The anglers that make the most of their chances are headed home with much more than just some fish. We are here. We are now in Key West. We're gonna be going out on a very special trip, y'all. We're going out with the Yankee Caps, this giant head boat behind me. We're gonna be doing some deep dropping and some bottom fishing and fishing for some pelagic species, doing a bunch of different techniques. We got a great group of guys. Let's load up the boat. What are you hoping to catch this trip? Honestly, a queen snapper. That is my all-time favorite. Yeah, big yeah. queen? I don't yeah. think I've ever caught a big queen. Especially on slow pitch too, right? That's what you're trying to do on all slow pitch? All I got are jigs. I got no bait, nothing else. Three jig rods. That's all we got. A purist, if you purist. will. <laughs> More like I'm gonna die. Bunch of the rods all loaded up. There's rod holders all over the boat. I'm gonna show you guys kind of the rest of the boat, what everything looks like. So this is the deck right here where everyone is gonna be fishing throughout the entirety of the trip. So, you know, you're gonna be on this rail fishing all up and down the boat. We're gonna have people in the front, a bunch of jiggers in the front, all the way down here. And in the back, you're gonna have a lot of the people that are gonna be bait fishing back here. You also have the top deck, which is a lot of storage. So we got all the coolers up here, more rods and reels, water bait coolers and everything like that. And you have the helm right up there in the front. That's where the captain is gonna be driving us. So here we have the galley. This is where all the smack talk's gonna happen throughout the trip. And bring you guys down here real quick. All the way down. That's where the AC actually works. Go ahead. Oh, it's dark. Mm -hmm. And we have the bunk room here. A little bit cramped down here, but we're gonna make it work. Who are you trying to catch this trip? Uh, queen snapper. Big queen snapper? That's big exactly queen snapper what Joey said. Snowy groupers. That's, that's, that's what I didn't I'm say after. that. Yeah, you did. You definitely That's big. what I'm after. I, mean, I definitely did. Joey loves queens, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, after what? Four or five. So a total of five hours driving down here for me, two and a half hours of waiting at the dock for yep. launch time. We are now underway, and how long do we got to the spot? Forever? Destination Forever? unknown. How many hours, Tony? 12 hours. 12 more Is hours? 12 hours? Oh, oh Lord. 10, 12. So yeah, <laughs> we're gonna drink some beers, shoot the breeze, and Amen. Uh, yeah, hopefully catch some fish when we get oh, there. Yeah. We just spent the past couple hours rigging up the rods. We're slowly making our way out here. We probably got another, I'd say like six hours of running before we get to the fishing grounds. Did a little raffle hosted by the, was that the rod room in Jigs R Us? Yes. Yeah, I want a jig. I want an awesome little Jigs R Us jig. Hopefully catch some studs on that. So it's pretty sick. There's a lot of cool prizes supplied by the rod room. But got all the rods rigged. Dinner is about, dinner is about to be served. We're gonna eat some tacos. They got the whole galley in there. All of our meals are gonna be served there over the next like 48-ish hours. So some stuff that I always make sure to have on me whenever I go on trips, I like to have a pair of split ring pliers and I like to have a hook file. 
Because you're constantly, especially when you're slow pitch jig fishing, you're constantly changing your hooks on your jigs, just like this guy right here. I just put these specific hooks on here, and you're just always going back and forth. I like to have these on me on my on my hip because I can always cut and change whatever lure, you know, tie new knots and stuff like that. And whenever you snag bottom, you might roll your tip, so it's nice to have a little hook file like this guy. Denko is a big sponsor of the channel. They make these products. Code Ryan Mori 10 is going to save you guys 10% off at checkout. So check them out. All of their products have a lifetime warranty on them. Good morning, y'all. How do you guys sleep? Perfect. You slept Never better. Yeah. We just literally drove through the night. Sun's coming up. We're almost to the deep drop spot. Right now, everyone is trolling with their Wahoo gear, hoping to get a bite. What do you got out, Spencer? Got a little uh, Yozuri Bonita in purple and orange. About 100 yards back there, you'll see if it gets bit. When we pull up, we got our first side bet to take care of, and that is the first person to catch a fish on the first drift will win a gift card, right? Yeah. Gift card, gift something card. like that. There's all sorts of bets throughout the trip. Biggest snapper and grouper, everyone throws money in the pot. Biggest fish overall. And there's a couple of rules that are like, you can't fish live bait, you can't, they can't be caught on the troll. Um, they have to be caught, you know, basically like jigging or bottom fishing or something like that, the traditional methods out here. So, bunch of, uh, you know, side motivation going to fish oh, hard. Yeah. I have confidence in one of these two. Yeah. We'll see what happens. About to get pulled off my feet by a barracuda. Well, you had the last trolling rod. Now you better have sarcasm, too. We need a double team it? Get that head up! Keep that head up! Look at this kid. Fucking <laughs> Otis. Hey, I think Tracy wanted some. Dad, we got bait. Oh! That was pretty sketchy. Wow. I thought you said it was good. So we just switched spots. Drop down, first drop. I got tight. Real, yeah, real heavy jig. 500 gram jig. All the way on the bottom. Try and keep them buttoned this time. Try not to let them go. Mayor brought me the good luck. You know, he couldn't be nice and eat it like halfway up. Yeah, they had to eat it on the bottom, exactly. you know? The jig hits the bottom and... I feel like that's how I get 90% of my bites though. To win the first, within the first two pulls, like... That's gonna be it. Are you crowding me? Trying to fix my rod so I can get down here. Buddy, we're just slow and steady cranking this boy up. We got that heavy, heavy jig. Don't need it ripping out. Come on up, son. Oh, you got a fish? Oh, yeah. Ooh, got color. Got color. What do we got here? Trapper. Oh, <laughs> right in the eyeball. Got him looking. First fish of the trip for me. Thank you, sir. I just rip these guys off. Yes, sir. When you're fishing offshore like this, especially in deep water, there's a good amount of current. So, as you're dropping your jig to the bottom, you're gonna be drifting, and if you just drop straight down, when that jig hits the bottom, it's gonna be way away from the boat. So, to combat that, we cast the jigs up current. Pretty far, almost as far as you can cast them. These slow pitch reels, you have to kind of learn how to cast them properly. And as I let it down, I apply a lot of tension with my finger because that's going to force the jig to just shoot straight down. If I don't apply any tension, a lot of the time that jig's going to start fluttering and doing its natural action. So I apply a lot of tension to my thumb, try to get it down to the bottom quick, get in that strike zone. We fish a lot of line and light line at that. So I'm fishing 30 pound braid, which is actually pretty heavy for most of the people or most everyone else is fishing out here. I just hit the bottom. I'm going to lift the rod up, get the slack out a little bit. Jig that jig up and down. Jig up and allow it to flutter back down with its natural action. And I work 
up and down in the water column. You kind of use trial and error to try and figure out where the fish are going to be on that day. Two of my bites today have actually been 50 to 100 feet off the bottom. So a lot of time you are going to get all your bites on the bottom. Sometimes the fish are a little bit more suspended up in the water column. Got this guy, probably another vermilion, something small. I was kind of high off the bottom, yeah. I was probably like 50 feet off the bottom. Could be a queen. Nah, it's real small. I mean, yeah. Baby queen. Hey, you're right. Yeah. Catch up. All right, we got another vermilion right in the eyeball. Vermilion king. Same size as the jig. These guys are delicious. We used to go out and catch these offshore as a kid. Whenever there was not a lot of current, we'd just drop down like three or four hooks and we'd catch a bunch of these guys. But as you can see, they will eat a jig, literally almost the exact same size as them. They just don't know what it is. It looks like a wounded fish and they're just trying to give it a shot. See if they can go over there and get an easy meal, maybe bite a piece off of it. But two fish in a row on a massive jig. Oh my oh, god! Biggest freaking yellow eye on the planet! Dude. Bro, that is a 20 pound yellow eye. Dude, that is a. What the heck? Sick. Ryan! Trade my, I want my rod back! This thing is so oh, oh, I got the wrong rod! Oh, this guy's a... Hold him up, Ryan. That thing's at least like 17 pounds. Oh, that's the biggest yellow eye I've ever seen. Yeah. Oh. I've seen him like, oh! oh more tight! On. Right, yeah, it ain't nothing like that yellow that. eye though. Can I point out that that, uh, that rod is having no problem with that jig? Oh, not at all. Yeah. I don't have my phone. Somebody grab a phone? Well, Mayor didn't believe me it was a yellow eye. Ooh. Dude, that is as big as a yellow eye gets. Like, I've never heard of one that big. Easily 20 pounds. Oh, well, easily 17, 20 pounds. Yeah. Woof! Crush it. Yeah. A little scamp? A little scamp? Oh, there you go. Nice. Oh, Alright, guy. Are those legal? Yeah. That's a little scamp grouper. Munch the jig. Again, small fish eating big jigs. You don't have to be afraid of dropping big jigs. It's all about matching the jig to the current that you're fishing. Look at the size of that jig that that scamp ate. He just came. Beautiful, beautiful little fish. They're gorgeous. You look at all that yellow all on their mouth. Pinks at the top of them, just gorgeous and delicious fish too. A little dry spell, but we just hooked up on the bottom. Nice bottom fish. There we go. Got some people hooked up in the front of the boat on jigs. Nice fish being caught on bait. It's definitely what this trip is going to be, you know, going through dry spells and then times when everyone's hooking up just gonna coax this guy way on up we got a long way to go yeah i think just gonna sneak right here oh look at that all right we're getting close we're getting close with this bad boy real heavy fish slow cranking him up don't want to rip that jig out of him definitely want to see what this bad boy is Cranking, cranking, cranking. Just slowly gaining in line, keeping constant tension. Snag. That's what it was. Snag a tile. Oh. Rich room, too. Yeah, well, it's my first blue line. My very first blue line tile fish. You see, I hooked that bad boy literally right there in the middle of the body. So as I was dragging him up, a lot of resistance dragging them up completely sideways but these deep water fish are absolutely delicious i filmed a video with victor and the boys we're fishing on pompano beach Florida, and we were catching golden tile fish which is a bigger species of these but all in all delicious and this guy is going to the box So we have a category for weirdest fish this trip. You uh, will win a little something something catching the weirdest fish. Right now, a puffer fish in almost a thousand feet of water is definitely gonna be uh, <laughs> the weirdest fish so far of the trip. You gonna put that down your pants? <laughs> Are you? No. <laughs> okay. Feels very tuna-like. Yeah, very tuna-esque, if you will. He's now charging me. Oh, double header. 
Oh, dude, I'm totally with you. I've been dropping, and it just keeps going, but I knew I was close to the bottom, so I'm just going to maintain tension. Tuna Tim. Back at it again. Are you speed jigging? No. He just can't stay away from the tunas anytime he's jigging. Do you? Yeah. On the drop? On the drop. I thought I had tuna spent Tuna Spence? Tuna Spence. No, he was pretty close to the bottom. Oh, okay. So I just hooked up, but before I hooked up, my man Spencer just caught a stud queen snapper on the jig. That's a nice one, brother. Look at that. Too bad. Look at real that. Too? Yeah. So high up. And we were both, I, dude, I was like 100 feet off the bottom. So yeah, were you, that, right? That queen snap rate is paid about 150 feet. Come on. Yeah, it is. Dude, I hooked nice. that thing so high. Yeah. <laughs> He's barely hooked. Oh, wow. Yay. Dude, he was 100 feet off the bottom, bro. Are you kidding me? I think that's my PB. That right there is my biggest scamp grouper. I'll definitely get bigger than this, but that is a solid fish on the slow pitch jig. Every single fish today has come on the exact same jig for me. Uh, Johnny Jigs 500 gram. Beautiful fish, man. Look at that yellow mouth. I really, really wanted to catch one of these fish one of our first slow pitch trips, and it just couldn't happen for me. But getting them today and getting them in weird ways i never would expect to hook this guy as high in the water column as i did but super cool super appreciative let's get him in the box giant. no it's it's close to yours, yeah. yours was tim just caught a really big queen on a jig pro jig yep that's the heat limited edition paint highlighter beautiful as biggest queen i've seen this trip and it was on a jig yeah awesome fish tim awesome Thank fish you. All right, we are back in action after a spot change. I dropped the different rig. For those of you that watch the videos regularly, you'll know this rig is called an ebbing rig. I learned about it in Japan. Used for catching tunas very regularly when tunas are keyed in on smaller baits. And we got us a tiny little bee liner. Bam. Got that small grub, but the jig gets that small grub down to the bottom. Bam. Ain't that bad boy. Oh, there's a shark right there. See him on top? Yep. So we just had some tunas blow up next to the boat. I'm gonna throw out the plug. There's also a shark, so that's a added challenge factor. I also had a tuna chase this thing on first cast. Let's see if we can hook one. I hooked up. Oh my god, that was a bonita. Oh my god. Oh my God, look at him, look at him, look at him. <laughs> I don't want the bonitas, but let's try it again. What are you getting all fired up here? Bonitas, but I did have a black fin first cast. What is it? Oh, oh. Look at him, look at him, look at him, look at him. Oh my God. <laughs> It looks like a big old piece. Yeah, it does. It looks like a monster. Nah, it's a giant bonita, dude. Yeah. 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 100%. Coming through, guys. Coming through. Excuse us. May not get this fish in with that shark right here. Shark just smoked a black fin. Yeah, that's right. That's what I'll be talking about. Dear kid, do it. Oh, my God. He went pure mode. Yeah. I'd take a nap before this. Rejuvenated. He went pure mode. It's a black man. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> that was so aggressive. That's sick, man. <laughs> oh, on the shit, wrap. Dude. On the X wrap. <laughs> it's like I, saw it eating, dog. I was like, oh, that's a that It was a giant, it looked like a giant beneath it at me. That was. Dude, you're just too used to it. Ridiculous. <laughs> oh 
my god. <laughs> you just pre bled him for me. Uh, that's a pretty sick black fin. On the Rapala X Wrap. Love doing it on top, man. There's a bunch of fish trying to eat it, so I'm gonna cast out again, see if I can get another one. Three, two, Woo. one. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Oh, oh there's no, a follower. No, no. Follower. Oh my god. Pull him right there. I'll get him. Yeah. Oh. Oh, he ripped off. Did you just get a mahi? Oh, 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 That's a bigger one too, right? That's a bigger one. Go get him. Go get him. Yee! That's a big one too. Huh? Yee! The sun's going down on day one. We still have like 20 hours of fishing left, so a lot of fish left to catch. Pretty much we spent most of today deep dropping. So we were in like 500 all the way out to like 1,000 feet. And I was pretty much jigging the entire time. A lot of guys have their electric reels, have bait and stuff like that. That's not something that I'm into, at least right now. So a lot of those guys produce some awesome fish on bait that I wasn't necessarily able to get into and a lot of us were just trying to catch some really, really cool fish on jigs. So a very specific way of fishing, if you will. Now we are moving into some shallower water, moving into some of the mutton grounds, mutton snapper grounds, and there should be a lot of blackfin tuna around. We probably have like an hour, hour and a half run until we get to those fishing grounds. So gonna eat some food, maybe take a little snooze, and then we're gonna fish throughout almost the entire night. I don't know if I'll make it, I hope I do. I know quickly it's gonna go from 25 Five guys fishing to 18 to 10 to maybe three of us um, but we'll see if I make it through the night because then we got a whole day of fishing after <laughs> thing is so fast oh. Oh, he heard me. Yeah, hooked in the back. Dropping the high speed vertical jig. I think there might be a fray in this line. We're about to see something. If I get broke off, I get broke off. But this is definitely a more tiring presentation. But it can be really fun when you get that bite. When you get that bite. Double header, son. Double header with Spence. Probably Benitas. Probably Benitas. But. There's other critters out here, so you just gotta keep fishing until you find what you wanted. But by the way, these things are coming straight to the surface. Very beneath ass. Yo, I got this boat fish under me. There's just one hook. Again. Oh. Yeah. That one's got the shoulder. Whoa. Wow, that was extravagant. Oh, it's a black fin too. I didn't even know. Did he get eight? No. Yep. Okay, Sorry, I got a flipping flip shirt right there. Watch yourself. <laughs> I was messing with it like it was Benita. That freaking shark was right there. <laughs> oh my god, and I was like, I looked down and I was like, oh look, it's a black fin. Oh my god, look at that shark. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, pull on him. 
Oh my god. This is epic. Playing figure eights with a shark. Oh my god, dude. Oh, look at that thing, how fired up he is. I think it's like a nine foot dusky. Teasing him. That's more of any of That's a nice shot. Real nice snowing. That's him, man. Yeah. That's that snow. Dude, that's a heck of a snowing. That's bigger than I've ever caught. Oh, and he's still alive. Little update for you guys. So the morning really was so many bonitas, more bonitas than you even wanted. Few fish mixed in, black fins. I got one black fin and like eight bonitas. A couple kingfish were caught and a couple bottom fish were just sharked. Last night there was really not much of a bite at all. Now we've been trying to do a couple different things throughout today. We started out trying to do some deep dropping. The current was just absolutely raging. Picked a couple fish here and there, but it was really, really hard to fish a jig. And even the deep drop guys were struggling to really hold bottom, get that right, present right presentation. So now we moved in a little bit shallower. There's been a few fish, it's been kind of on and off, and that's just how this fishing goes. You get spurts of bites and bites and bites, and then it slows down, but it's heating up. I think we're gonna have a great afternoon, so let's get back to it. Dude! You better get that mounted. Look at that bag. <laughs> Hang that bad boy on the wall. Oh, tight son. Oh, tight son. Oh, GoPro was already recording. Tight on something here. Put on a 350 gram enforcer by Jigs R Us. Mayor handed it to me this morning. Said, try this jig out. First drop with it, just hooked up. I could start pumping it like crazy, like I was doing with the tune on the spinning rod. Ooh, something just ripped. It's shaking. Shaking bacon. Ooh, tail hook. Another. Hey, what did oh, you catch? this is my PB. Yeah. Grab that jig. Sand deal and the, the nickname is Slippery Dick. We're gonna get him unhooked to get out of the way of this rotation. Here we got our basic bottom rig. So I got a mono top shot on my rod that's filled with braid. And I got a sliding 12 ounce egg weight here. Two swivels. And I got about 12 feet of 50 pound down to a 6.0 circle hook. I'm going to take this butterfly goggle eye. These apparently are just money baits when the bite's right. We've kind of had slow bait fishing conditions, but when the muttons are around, this is what everyone wants on these trips. Toss him in the water. Toss this in the water. We got a shark hanging around the boat too, so hopefully he doesn't eat this. There he is. Yep, I'm dropping fast, which is against my rules typically, but I'm gonna try and get it around him. Now I'm gonna slow it down. I try and drop slow, it stops the bait from spinning on the way down and gets a better presentation. A lot of time, you drive, if you drop too fast, your bait will get all fouled up with everything that you're using or with the, the rest of your rig. And then when you're on the bottom, it looks stupid and no fish is gonna eat it. Dropping down a goggle eye, and literally as I'm slow dropping it down, I got eight on a butterfly goggle eye bottom bait. No clue what this is, man. Nice fish. Nice fish, whatever it is. Yeah. What's that? Shark? Yeah, shark followed you up. <laughs> Not all the way down at the bottom. <laughs> Dude, I was I was waiting to touch bottom at like any minute. That's a good fish. Whatever it is, it's good, yeah. I don't like the fact that we see a shark down there. <laughs> Butterfly goggle eye. Winding fast as I can with that shark around the boat. Winding, winding. Jack. Yeah. I'm a cow. Yeah. Woo! First one of those I've seen all trip. 
force this Almaco off the bottom. They definitely brawl. It's crazy how hard they can fight for their size, man. A fish, you know, can get a lot bigger than this, but ate the goggle eye on the way down. First one of these that I've seen all trip. I honestly thought we were gonna catch a lot more fish like yep. this, but it's cool, it's action. Reeling up, I was kind of done with this bottom fishing, right next to the boat, hooked the resident Cuda. Should have fed him. He's all yours. It's fish on the ebbing rig. Ate that little grub down on the bottom, that smaller profile. Let's see what we got. I think we got a ham bone, something like that. Bringing them on up. Come on now. Show me something. Show me something good. Nice. It's my first one of those. Yeah, that's a good uh, one yeah. too. First one of those. First one ever. What's yeah, the other so. name for them? Blackfin snapper. Blackfin snapper. Beautiful fish. Easy to Ate that grub. Hooked right in the top of the mouth. Still got yellow eyes, so. I mean, I thought I was looking at yellow eye snappers at first when they were pulling these guys up, but not quite the same fish. But gorgeous. Looks delicious to me. I guess blackfin comes from that dot right there, right? Yes. Right there. Yes. Beautiful fish, man. Beautiful. Cool to catch them on the ebbing rig. The same, you know, techniques I was using in Japan, catching a new species for me out here. This guy got groupered on the way up. He literally looks like a croaker that got smoked by a snook for all my snook guys out there. But Rob was able to rip him out of that grouper's mouth. You know, no clue what could be down there. You know, it could have been a giant black grouper, could have been a goliath, could have been really anything. My guess is a giant black. Dude, probably. Wow. Caught me a scamp today, boys. Dude, that is winning, bro. Did you? Oh my god. Hold <laughs> <laughs> on, get a picture of that. Woo! Buddy. The biggest fish of the trip. I thought I could. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. <laughs> That's adorable. <laughs> Jay, you caught a pet. On that little boat. On the grub tail, yeah. back at the dock everyone's offloading all their gear while offloading all the fish and everything like that we need to find out who caught the biggest fish some of the most special fish because there's a bunch of side bets side hustles uh, that we have going on throughout the trip this trip was put together by jigs r us in the rod room so you see jigs r us here that's the brand and they had a bunch of raffles at the beginning of the trip a bunch of free jigs merch and stuff like that went out we also had a bunch of side bets going on throughout the entirety of the trip your boy actually ended up winning one of those to my own surprise and that was for the weirdest fish so for the weirdest fish i got like a sweet little prize pack got a bunch of jigs r us jigs so 250 gram sardine was in there we got a 300 gram crusher and we got some of jigs r us new stuff coming soon this is the 350 gram enforcer and a 300 gram destroyer super stoked to fish these on my next trip now we have to find out who caught the biggest fish we're gonna put some of these big fish on the scales and see who won the biggest parts of the pools because they're gonna get a bunch of cash because everyone threw money in there and they're gonna get an awesome rod and an awesome reel so let's check it out 28 it's got to be 41. 37. 41. 37. Oh, yeah. Giants. 32. 
32. 32. Sleeping on the job. 35. Sorry. We had an issue with 42 over here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the plug eater. Oh, uh, the shark yeah. bit him too on the way up. Wow. Oh, that was the one you were, you were right on, there. On on top, yeah. 18. 33. 41. Oh, got 33. Oh, so heartbreaking. For 15, man. Please. Please. Anybody else? I got a tuna. Hang on. You got to sell it. I got Oh, here, okay. you can that one off. Oh. Number seven. Those are both on bait, right? Every time. Every time. Wow. Every time. Wow. Crazy. It's okay, we're, we're, we're just going to stop disrespecting that. the snapper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a piece, Whose tuner is this? That is That's a mine. piece, bro. Ah, That's very nice, very nice. Did the X-Trap count as a jig? Was this the popper one? No, the X-Trap, yeah. yeah. The plug. So right now we're trying to see who's got the heaviest fish. So far, yeah. That's different overall. You think so? Yeah, if nobody else has something, that's it. Yeah. Lucked out. <laughs> Who's tuning? That's mine. Oh, that's you? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, on a jigging and bottom fishing trip, the, the top the top bait right? got Makes in. Sense. The top one. Yeah. The shark tried to do us dirty though. That's pretty cool. The pier kid. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Cool. Not snapper, done yet. <laughs> the snapper, the biggest snapper grouper caught on a jig. Yeah. So, yeah, I think you heard it. We're trying to see who caught the biggest snapper or grouper on a jig. Spencer has got that with a big queen right now. That mutton, we definitely wanted an extra couple pounds. <laughs> wow. The dark horse. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You caught that, right? Uh, Alex caught that. I did. Wow. If you would have had that grouper, you could have had, maybe had both. <laughs> now when you got on the jig, right? Yeah. Out or wins any of these prizes, if you have social media, please show some love to the manufacturers that provided these for you to win. Just tag them. Anything on social media. We'd appreciate that. Ryan. You got first place, accurate value of 500, slow pitch jigging reel. Nice, nice. Congratulations. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Second place, Tom Ford, Temple Reed, Levitate Nablo Rod. Oh, that's sweet there you go. Third right. uh, yeah. place. Third place. Anyway, Ocean's yeah, Legacy, slow element rod. Good job. Congratulations, yeah. guys. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, guys. Yep. There you go. 19, 19 pound black thing. So this is the first place reel. With an accurate Valiant 500 Narrow. Awesome, super popular reel. I've never owned one of these, so stoked to give it a try. It's pretty darn cool. Did not expect to be leaving with a new reel on when I hopped on the boat. Let's see what we won in the pot. I haven't counted it, don't know what we got. So we got one, two, three, 400, 500, 550, 570, 590, 610, 630, 650, 670, 690, 710, 730, 770, 790, 810, 830, 850 dollars. And gave 200 bucks to the crew. So in total, the winnings were $1,050. Pretty crazy, didn't think I was gonna win this, especially with the tuna, but a lot of quality fish this trip, just not a one giant Mogan. So lucked out with that tuna, and it was on the top water, which is, or on the, the Rapala x trap which is just hilarious on a bottom fishing trip, that the biggest fish came on top. But I wanna thank you guys so much for watching, and I need you to do me a huge favor and check out this video right here, catching some monster fish on the pier. We'll see you there.